Okay. <clears throat> so my presentation is over Leslie, Marm, and Silco. So, Leslie Marmon Silco was born in Albuquerque, New Mexico on March 5th, 1948, and was raised in a village called Old Laguna, which was on the edge of the Laguna Pueblo Indian Reservation. Her parents are Leland Howard Marmon, a photographer, and Mary Virginia Leslie, a teacher. She has two sisters, as well as grandmother Lily Stagner and great-grandmother Helen Romero, both women were a major part of her life, and Leslie has t was told old told traditional stories about the Laguna people from her grandmother, her aunt Susie, and her grandfather Hank. Her heritage includes that of Anglo American, Mexican, and Laguna Pueblo, or mixed in blood in Plains Indians. Her mother kept her in a traditional cradle board for her first year of life. She attended a school on the reservation until 5th grade, then went to Catholic schools in Albuquerque, and earned a BA at the University of New Mexico, then went to law school under a special program for Native Americans, but she gave that up to become a writer, a writer and a teacher. <clears throat> After winning a specific award, she quit teaching to become a full-time writer. In 1965, she married Richard C. Chapman, and they had a son, Robert Chapman. They didn't then divorced in 1969. In 1971, she married John Silco. They had a son, Casimir Silco, before divorcing. <clears throat> As of January of this year, she lives in Tusco, Arizona, at the age of 74. <clears throat> so, for her queer career, her works focus on American Indians, their traditions and stories, and modern life as an American Indian living life with what is it is is in nature. She has also touched on things such as modern issues, such as feminism, sexuality, um, racism, as well as some issues of America, the past. She's a novelist, poet, and essayist. She published her first story in 1969, Man to Send Rain Clouds, which was originally for a writing assignment in college. It was about a man who had died and was given a traditional burial, and the Catholic priest wasn't happy about it because they weren't called in. It was the first step in their direction of success. 1974, most, some poems that she wrote collected it in a volume called Laguna Woman was published. In 1981, a collection of poems and photo photographs were published, which was Storyteller. The story of the lullaby, which is in the blue textbook, is a part of this collection. In 1999, her story, Gardens in the Dunes, was published. <clears throat> so, she's ha she has achieved, she's earned achievements and awards. And some of her, her achievements and awards include a debut recipient of the MacArthur Foundation grant in 1981, Native, Amer Native Writers Circle of America's Lifetime Achievement Award in 1994, and the Robert Kirsch Award <coughs> <laughs> Her story, Man to Send Rain Clouds, was awarded a National Endowment for the Humanities Discovery Grant. Um, and she won major awards in, 19, in the 1970s to the 80s, which included the Pushcart Prize for Poetry. Uh, so, critics. A fellow Pueblo poet named, called, criticized Leslie's book ceremony, saying that she was giving away secret tribal knowledge to outsiders. Some people may criticize her work as they don't feel that she represents some subjects properly. For example, in her novel, Almec of the Dead, homosexual or bisexual char male characters that she depicts, depicted are horrible, abusive, cruel. People didn't like that she was depicting them that way. A writer, David Truer, criticized Leslie along with Lewis Erdrich, Sherman Alexi, and others for inaccuracies and inconsistencies in their works, and it's believes that a lot of their popularity is based on people believing their novel and stories are accurate depictions of Indian life and culture. <clears throat> so this is some of her literary works. But some of the her her most um, more popular ones and more talked about ones are Ceremony, which was nineteen seventy seven, Alma of the Dead, nineteen ninety one, Guards of the Dunes, nineteen ninety nine, 
Lagoon of Woman, which is a collection of poems in 1974, Thor Taylor in 1981, The Man to Send Rain Clouds in 1969, and Yellow Woman in 1993. Uh, <clears throat> so some of the quotes that I have picked of hers, because I, I, I found them and they sound, they, they're, they're good. The Pueblo people and the indigenous people of America see time as round, not as a long linear string. Time is round, if time is an ocean, then something that happened 500 years ago may be quite me and real, whereas something inconsequential that happened an hour ago could be farther away. I suppose that the core of my writing is the attempt to identify what it is to be a half-breed or mixed-blood person, what it is to grow up neither white nor fully traditional Indian. <clears throat> what I know is Laguna. This place I am from is everything I am as a writer and human being. I see myself as a member of a global community. My old folks who raised me saw some, themselves as citizens of the world. We see no bur borders. <clears throat> when I write, I am writing to the world, not to the Mar United States alone. So, for the literary quote or excerpts, I chose a poem of hers called Story of Bear Country. <clears throat> you will know when you walk in bare country, by a silence flowing swiftly between juniper trees, by sun down the colors of sand rock around you. You may smell damp earth scratched away from yucca roots. You may hear snorts in the grouse, slow and massive sounds from caves in the cliffs up high above you. It's difficult to explain how they call you, all but a few who went to them left behind families, grandparents, and sons a good life. The problem is you will never want to return. The beauty will overcome your memory like winter sun, melting eye shadows from snow, and you will remain with them, locked forever inside yourself. Your eyes will see you, dark, shaggy, thick. We can send bear priests loping after you, their medicine bags bouncing against their chests, naked legs painted black, bear claw necklaces rattling against their casp of blue spruce. They will follow your trail into the narrow canyon, through the blue-gray mountain sage, to the clearing where you stopped to look back and only saw bear tracks behind you. When they call, faint memories will wither in your heart and startle you with their distance. The others will listen because, they're, because bear priests sing beautiful songs. They must, if they are ever to call you back. <clears throat> they will try to bring you step by step back to the place you stopped and found only bear prints in the sand where your feet have been. <clears throat> Whose voice is this, you may wonder, hearing the story when, after all, you are alone, hiking these canyons and hills while your wife and your and sons are waiting back at the car for you. But you have been listening to me for some time now, from the very beginning, in fact, and you are alone in this canyon of stillness, not even see your birds flutter. See? The sun, go the sun is going down now. The sand rock is washed in its colors. Don't be afraid. I love you. We've been calling you. All this time, go ahead, turn around. See the shape of the, your footprints in the sand. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> some for Leslie Marmonsoko, in a YouTube video titled In Search of Novel, as Marmonsoko, Leslie talks about their time, time period when she wrote her novel, Ceremony. What kind of or what went into it. <clears throat> uh, she had moved to Alaska from Arizona with her current husband, John Soko, where it rained a lot. She discussed how it affected her mental and physical health, and she began experiencing migraines. She described how she began writing as she had a book contract to make a story, short story or collection. She believes it saved her life in a sense that the story developed into more than just a short story. <clears throat> she explained the meaning behind ceremony as that is the name of healing rituals in Navajo country. Brooke was healing for her, her ceremony. <clears throat> so my thoughts on Leslie Marmosoko. From what I lear have learned of Leslie Marmosoko, I think she's pretty cool. There's something about Native American stories and their ideas of nature and being connected to it that is fascinating magicals. 
but it's supernatural. As I feel for her, I feel for the situation Native Americans have experienced since the beginning of colonization, modern lives they many now live. Leslie seems to let her stories take her wherever they need to go, and I think that's pretty cool because I think that is similar to how I write some of the things I write, some of the art I try to make. <coughs> and this is my work cited.